Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us D. Raghunandan, an expert on aerospace as well as with News Click. Raghu, we are discussing the issue of the Mars exploration, the Mars probe. What do you think are the major achievements of this current US Mars probe? Well, I think there are three uh, things that uh, are uh, exciting about this Mars uh, probe. Uh, the first is the uh, soft landing of the rover uh, itself, the accuracy with which that was done. It was a very narrow um, aperture open and an opportunity to land the probe in the exact location where they had wanted it to uh, land. They were looking for places where it is hoped that there would be water. There are known tracks of water available uh, there in the plane. So they landed there in just the spot they wanted to land. And they also wanted to achieve a soft landing uh, of the rover. And the way that was done was also very uh, innovative. It was not just the parachute uh, drop. The parachute itself was done well. It's a very large chute to be able to land the rover properly. But they also used what they call a, a space crane which is essentially a device by which you could lower the module uh, softly towards the Martian surface so that you would have the kind of soft landing that was uh, required. And there was always the danger that the, the last thing that you would hear from the uh, uh, rover would have been the sound of it crashing onto the surface, but that didn't happen. So that was a very good uh, so it's thing that called was done. the tense seven minutes <laughs> That's of right. the landing. That's right. So that was very well done, uh, I thought. And now the expectation will be to see uh, how long the rover remains deployed and the kind of results that the rover sends back. Uh, because the rover is now going to actually this time test the Martian surface and you will get... Uh, far greater amount of information on the Martian surface than you got earlier. It's going to look for water and particularly for traces of carbon. Uh, and if it does find those kinds of traces, then obviously you're talking about the search for life on Mars. Possibility of life. That's right. Okay. Uh, coming back to what you said, it's going to explore the uh, Martian surface. So what is, its, what is its energy source going to be? Because it has to be active for almost sure. two well, years. You have, a, you have a small radio, uh, a nuclear power uh, source inside the rover. So there is radioactive material uh, there, which is going to be on the Martian surface, going to be operational for about two years. And then it remains to be seen how much other sources of energy it's able to uh, harness. Uh, but that's basically the driver for its uh, for the module. That's what gives it its longevity. I that's guess. right. The second part of it is that when you said looking for carbon, what you really mean is carbon-based organic molecules. That's right. right. Now there's an old debate that yeah. you know is there life on Mars? Do you think there is going to be a definitive answer with respect to the experiments that can be carried out? I think that's very doubtful. Uh, the first steps would be the location of water. Uh, if you can actually find traces of water, actual liquid water uh, present, that would be a beginning. If the uh, search in the Martian soil uh, yields anything like uh, carbon-based organisms uh, in the uh, Martian soil, that would be uh, a great uh, thing. But carbon based I, complex molecules. Complex molecules which could, which could later lead. But you know, I've always wondered why we always assume that life forms outside the earth are also going to be carbon based life forms. Uh, if you really go with the green man hypothesis, I suppose that works. But you never know what kind of life forms there are going to be on some other. Uh, planet. But I, but I would be very surprised if you actually got definitive answers to that question on this probe. What do you think uh, the long-term sense that is the objective of this mission? What the, the rover is called? Curiosity? Curiosity. That's what the exactly. vehicle is being called, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I think the significance apart from the curiosity 
uh, a factor of the exploration is that from the NASA point of view, uh, manned explorations have now come down except to the space, space uh, station. The shuttle program has gone, so they are depending on Russian and other uh, uh, services to go up to the uh, space station. So it looks like NASA is going to put more efforts, efforts into planetary exploration uh, within our solar system, which may tomorrow lead to a revival of the manned uh, exploration program in Mars, uh, for instance. But that's a long way off. But till then, if we start seeing more unmanned exploration, then certainly as far as the manned explorations part of it was concerned, they were always more in the nature of adventure than in throwing up new science. Whereas the unmanned explorations always give you more science, may not have been as dramatic as the manned. Uh, yeah, but that that is a question that, is good, uh, that needs to be asked. Does manned exploration add anything that unmanned exploration does not in terms of science? I honestly uh, have not felt so, uh, except that it tells you the science of what happens to man in long-term stay in space. <laughs> uh, so it tells you that. But if you're wanting to collect information on the other planets, on the atmosphere, on the soil, and on the surface, those you would get back from the instruments. Uh, you don't need a human hand to go and collect the soil or sample the air. Much cheaper to send <laughs> my, exactly. the instruments That's than right. rather than send a man. That's right. And in any case, the, carrying the, those instruments. The, per, the human being there is not going to conduct the experiments. The experiments are ultimately going to be conducted by uh, machines of some form or the other. And you don't, as I said, you don't need the human hand to pick it up. A robotic arm will do just as well. The Indian Mars program is also supposed to have been agreed to very recently right. by the government. It has been given clearance. It's supposed to do it in November 2013. Yeah. What do you think is the reason for suddenly trying to talk about such an ambitious project within the span of roughly one year, three months? Don't you think it's very ambitious to do it in this, in this short time? Well, the Mars mission that India has launched now, I mean, the it has got the approval of the union cabinet and the money has been made available. Actually, the first tranche of money was already made available in last year's union budget, where the first tranche of money was uh, released. This mission has been on the cards now for five or six uh, years. Uh, from that point of view, and given the rather limited, I would say, uh, ambition of the science that you plan to uh, uh, collect in terms of information from this mission. It's not a particularly ambitious uh, mission, but I think there were some factors which may have prompted the decision to go 